Nos Nomadic is set to be the next presenter of our event. He's a senior .NET developer and entrepreneur. Using Orchard as a center portal for the biggest small business association in Southeast Europe talk is a showcase of how they use Orchard to implement this portal. And, and what problems they encountered in the meanwhile. It's been running for two years now, so uh, he will talk about how they what they feel work and what could be better and what hacks they restored to. Okay, uh, thank you all. Thank you, Victoria. Um, so, my name is Bruno, and I'll be talking uh, about uh, our experiences with Orchard Core. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a uh, developer, and uh, I also have a small company, with, uh, which I uh, founded with my friend. And okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's uh, uh, five or six of us right now. And uh, we are basically an agency. We do a lot of different uh, developments, not just uh, Orchard, but also uh, in React, uh, Elastic, SQL, and that kind of uh, ecosystem tech stack. But uh, we don't shy with, uh, away from uh, similar technologies. I'm pretty much a generalist uh, since I've been around in development since 2007, so you, you see a lot of stuff in, in, the, in the meanwhile. Um, so the agenda is uh, very simple. We're going to talk about uh, some kind of a bit of background story, uh, and then some implementation talk, and then uh, some lessons learned while we were implementing. So let's set the scene. Um, UGP is uh, uh, is a short for Udruga uh, Glas Podzetnika in Croatia, which means Voice of Entrepreneurs in Croatia. And uh, we, the organization wasn't, didn't exist uh, until 2020, nor was it even in any in minds of, of people. But uh, it soon became a necessity once COVID struck. And uh, because uh, a lot of these small businesses, as you know, uh, were uh, shut down because of the, because of the measures and the uh, Croatian government didn't actually respond the way that people were satisfied with, so it's a grassroots initiative, which uh, what, whose aim was to protect um, uh, the interests of these small businesses and uh, try to get uh, the government to respond accordingly, so that they can continue their uh, work uh, and uh, operations after the COVID instead of going bankrupt. Uh, and we were very successful at that. And uh, the organization grew really fast, and we were we out of nowhere we became like the most influential business association in Croatia because the problem was that most of the other uh, already existing associations didn't really cater to uh, needs of small businesses that much because they were mostly financed by bigger businesses. So that's what that's who their real customers were, and uh, these were left behind. And although. Uh, formally, they would have to represent the whole spectrum. Uh, uh, the organization was a non-profit, uh, and, uh, which means uh, money is tight, although <coughs> donations were pretty... Uh, uh, the donations were very uh, good at first couple of years uh, because people were interested and uh, engaged and afterwards of course uh, starts, things start dwindling down and then the organization has to also change its kind of course. Uh, Covid set the tone when it comes to how the organization was organized too because uh, we had to do everything online as everyone else had to do it. So uh, since the organization grew pretty fast. Uh, now we have 20,000 members. Uh, uh, there was need to be able to scale that kind of numbers and uh, to somehow manage all these members and also uh, admission the members and stuff like that. So uh, first stab at it was uh, some kind of patchwork of different tool toolings. So of course, we had a WordPress website. Uh, and then uh, one of our uh, um, um, 
board members also youaboutmonday.com and then we started using that as for the, for member management and it was pretty f- useful at first because you know you could uh, you could uh, get it up get it running up and fast you had these web forms and stuff so stuff was working okay and another, another of our members had web power uh, email marketing system so we would then export from one system to the other and so on and so forth uh, and we also had the main communication channel, which is Facebook group. That's actually how the whole thing started and uh, grew. Uh, Facebook group has around 60,000 members. Uh, uh, and it was the main channel of communication. And uh, we had a lot of uh, issues with managing all these members and all this uh, and, and, and donations and all that stuff. Uh, so we uh, wanted to go from Monday, we want to leave the Monday uh, tables and go to something a bit more manageable where people who could, could manage their own details and uh, and maybe, you know, build on top of that for some other system. So then we uh, made a members portal. Uh, we wanted to make a members portal uh, for for automating this, this kind of stuff. Uh, and Orchard was not the first choice for that kind of uh, 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 portal. But uh, we, as that's one of the uh, good things about having a business association because you have a lot of different, uh, very capable members who can do stuff. And uh, uh, one of these members uh, approached us with his own rapid application development tool, uh, which was used by some other association in Croatia, I'm not going to name, name uh, which, but it starts with American, <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, uh, anyway, uh, it's not a joke or anything, it's just about, uh, uh, I want to uh, uh, associate with Las Vegas. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, it was made, the, the tooling was made with uh, uh, ASP Classic. Uh, and uh, it was hosted on some other uh, different uh, hosting and so on and so forth. So it had a bunch of hostings, a bunch of different services, a bunch of this, and no one to actually take care of that and uh, no money to actually uh, uh, support that. So uh, people were willing to work on that, but, uh, you know, members, I say, but, you know, you can only count on goodwill so so long, right? So you need to be cost wary. And uh one second. Uh-huh. Uh okay. So yeah, this is basically what I was talking about pre- uh, slide pre- uh, previously. Uh we had all these systems then there were much of them were closed source, uh others had commercial plugins some were uh, complicated for management and uh, you know you would have these we had these some of these tools were for us free but so after a while they were saying okay maybe we, you know it should be okay if you start paying for them we're like ah, I don't know if we will be we we're, we're not using it at full power blah blah anyway a lot of different issues so the final solution was to try to you know get from Three, three or four different tools to one tool and maybe and potentially that tool being free and open source. So uh, first candidate was WordPress and I have some uh, I have some opinions about WordPress. Uh, I'm also ex- had experience, I also had experience with uh, development for WordPress. Uh, you, you just can't avoid it. Uh, it's everywhere and um, uh, and this is my general experience with it. You know, it's, it has all these great stuff, but there's also a kind of but about it, you know, there's like a lot of plugins, but most of them actually eventually get, you have to pay them, uh, and some there are some monetization problems, then, you know, you, you have lots of developers and lots of support and easy to find, and so, but you actually need them all the time, because there's all these security updates and all this uh, stuff that need, that's breaking down, and... Uh, and uh, all these uh, attacks and what, 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 what you, whatever you want. So the operation costs of WordPress sites is actually not, uh, 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 how to say it, I know a creation word, but uh, uh, you, you can't ignore it. <laughs> um, 
it's very scalable and fast, but you have to cache a lot. Uh, that's my experience. I don't know if anyone else, but most of these are like, you know, if you have a lot of entities in the side, then stuff gets stuff breaking down. Uh, <coughs> open source, but not really if you use a lot of plugins. So the, it's open source and it's bare bones. So in the end, it's uh, uh, easy and cheap to host. But if when you, once you host it and you want to update it, then you have to go through the whole process or you're manually doing that or you actually find out some way to do it properly, whatever, or you're using some kind of SaaS model. It's, you know, out of the box, you don't really get a good, uh, you don't get a good bit of success, let's say it, you know. After a while, it gets complicated, you need people, you need uh, maintenance and all that. So, um, uh, the final solution was Orchard then for us uh, I, they were lucky that I knew about it <laughs> uh, although I did, we did a new project before we did it in Orchard 1 for uh, one of the uh, creation um, what's it called a courier service uh, Overseas Express I don't know if they're, if they're just creation or they're like international I don't know but uh, they operate in Croatia and all, and uh, and Orchard Core was uh, then a really uh, nice and suitable and stable solution so uh, it has all these checkboxes uh, cleared out and I like to pre uh, uh, accentuate the, la the last one uh, compared to WordPress Orchard Core is, is truly low maintenance I mean you do have to maintain it and stuff, but you can be sure that if you put some site somewhere that is, you're going to find it there a year, in a year and it works. Which WordPress is not really the case uh, if you're not taking care of it. Uh, part of it is because it's not so popular as WordPress, of course, but, and then people are not willing to attack it. But uh, the other, other part is uh, the, 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 the inherent, in, inherent uh, ecosystem and mindset and uh, the way people approach it is different than in the, for WordPress, right? Uh, and you can do great things with WordPress, so that's the, uh, don't, don't uh, get, get me wrong, but I think that uh, there's also this is a hidden gem when it comes to uh, getting a nice business uh, website or a site or, or a service working properly uh, years in years uh, forward, um, and uh, the final product can be found on this link here. I don't know if we can maybe later. Uh, it's easy to start locally. I'll, I'll send this over, uh, and uh, it's also a nice product. It has easy to start locally. You just type in .NET uh, run. We also have these migrations going on, blah blah, blah and then you see the site. Um, Pretty close to how it's on the on the production, and uh, it's composed of a couple of modules. Uh, maybe we could have made more modules from uh, from these, but uh, uh, we stuck to uh, the main module and the theme module. And there are some of these other uh, vendor plugins which you just made part of the of the solution because we did some kind of customizations on it, so we didn't want to. Um, uh, we didn't want to do any kind of crazy stuff. We just copied it over. I hope it's okay. I don't know if any of you will see. Um, anyway, uh, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's hosted on Azure. Uh, it's a very small instance, uh, basic uh, SQL, and it works great. Yeah, I mean, it's like the cost is uh, not not counting the web app service. It's like five dollars a month or something just for the database, and it works pretty fine. Um, it has that kind of warm up thing going on, but after a while, it's it's it's, it's great. Uh, so uh, let's go a bit deeper there. So the members module uh, that's kind of the meat of the member of the of the um, um, portal, right? So it's basically a couple. It's basically uh, ASP.NET pages, which are 
uh, used to show data from uh, different uh, for different parts of uh, the portal. Uh, I'll show you just yeah. This is basically uh, that page where you have uh, these. Uh, it's breaking now. Nice. <laughs> um, and it's made in. I think it's because of the different resolution, whatever. I have to check. So this is the portal part. Let's go there. And uh, sorry about creation. Uh, it's uh, these are like different ASP pages. My 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 data, my documents, donate my donations, uh, my uh, my uh, ad. You can put. We had some kind of uh, ads which you can uh, classify. So you can you know post in between members. These are like extra offers for members, uh, events, and newsletter. So you can uh, you can manage some of your stuff. And these are all like ASP.NET pages. which then hook up to different uh, um, my my data. So yeah, you can see uh, what I'm using here is um, um, Orchard fields, right? And I'm showing them in the front end inside the ASP.NET page, right? And uh, I'm doing some kind of like, okay, I'm if I'm sh showing it in this area, I'm disabling some stuff. If I'm, So you can see these fields are disabled, but you can re uh, review them. If they're shown, you can change them in the admin area, but you can re review them here, right? And it's still just ASP.NET fields. And uh, there's a bunch of pages like that. They are all like connected really uh, tightly to to uh, Orchard, and all this stuff is content items. Uh, so when it comes to organization of files, it's like feature scoped. Uh, we have folders for members, payments, donations, uh, inter-member ads, and events. And uh, every one of these folders has like handlers. Uh, drivers, uh, uh, parts, stuff like that. Um, yeah, and as I said, it's heavily right to Orchard core facilities and data model. And when it comes to data model, um, so just for example, like how we set up a data model for, uh, so we have we actually have two types of members. There's a natural natural member and company, right? So, <coughs> and uh, a physical person can have multiple companies, so for every company, you know, you, uh, he can register as a member of the association, and uh, they all, and user can have multiple uh, members, but that's not really the case. We just, uh, multi one user can log into multiple uh, members, but uh, that's not really used uh, in that way, it's just the way connections work. So, uh, one user to end members, one member to end companies, right? And these connections are realized through list parts. Uh, so, member is, is part of the list of user, uh, and company is part of the list of uh, member. And uh, this is uh, this is the interesting like part uh, like uh, how which I like about uh, Orchard is the whole um, composition over inheritance uh, is that you add a part to a member which has name, surname, ID, and address type, and then you do the same for a company which, because it has all the same uh, all the same stuff, all the same fields, all the same attributes. Maybe uh, minus the surname, but we actually just ignore that for the company. And we uh, use drivers when we show a company. We use driver to actually uh, override and not show the surname when you're showing the fields. <coughs> um, okay, uh, what else? We are using uh, uh, the whole versioning, publishing uh, stuff. Uh, as a way of communication between members and administration. If a member submits something, it's a draft. If if uh, ad administration confirms that, then it becomes a published and official thing. So uh, that also proved a very useful facility 
uh, when it comes to development, you would have to really spend a lot of time developing that on your own and trying to get that working as uh, uh, you know the way Orchard has it out of the box. Um, not to mention the whole user permissions and stuff like that. So this kind of communication, members, administration, and stuff works really great uh, from Orchard uh, inside Orchard. Um, yeah, so I, this was just an example. There are other content types uh, which follow a similar uh, pattern. We use a lot of taxonomies. This is one thing that I was, my, my grant was that, that uh, the taxonomy stuff is, we had hard code content item ID, so uh, it's easier to uh, follow our development process. And uh, after initial migration, it shows JSON. We, what we would do, like, okay, we have to add a field. We will go to local dev uh, UI. Then we would uh, add uh, a field in the UI. There was this. There's this great tool for code generation, which shows you the code for migrating. We will copy that code into our code as part of, as a new migration. And that way, uh, once we publish, the whole thing gets uh, reflected on the on the production tool. So, um, uh, yeah, so that, that's how it is. And that's why con uh, hard coding is content item like this, although it's, it is unfortunate, uh, was, uh, you know, much easier to do with this kind of process. I hope everyone knows what I'm talking about. But <laughs> anyway, there's a, there's a code for that. Maybe, we'll, uh, maybe we can get into it uh, later on. Um, yeah, so this, is, this comes as to... Um, one of, the, one of the stuff that we actually struggled most with is data migration. We had already existing data in uh, other databases that we needed to, uh, there's like 20,000 members that we needed to uh, import into Orchard and the, into Orchard data model. Uh, and uh, what I ended up doing is creating a SQL script which would uh, concatenate these fields with these different, uh, uh, like, you know, speed line, Name equal uh, uh, name uh, e equals not equals but uh, that are uh, yeah uh, name the name and then it's like you know you basically uh, have SQL work as a JSON generator and, uh, and there would be a select blah blah and then it would generate the whole JSON and then you would have to import it. And that's the other problem that we had. So uh, if you try to import 20,000 content items into, uh, into uh, Orchard via uh, current uh, facility, I'm not sure if something changed in, in the meanwhile, maybe it didn't, maybe it didn't, maybe it didn't, maybe it did. But when we have tried to do it, it would time out, you know, it would just die. Uh, and we didn't know where it uh, would uh, stop. So we created uh, this fast import thing where we would just plug into straight into SSQL, I think, or somewhere close to there. Uh, and uh, we would, uh, uh, what we did was we would read into all the entities, we would store them in somewhere as a static in memory, and then we had this batch job which would just in, uh, import it uh, 500 items at a time, something like that. So that we would just leave that uh, in the background and we, we had like this kind of a, um, not notification when it would uh, be done with imports. It basically, what how other systems work also like you you take stuff and then you start importing and you get this kind of status or of uh, progress of how much stuff got imported. So it's nothing uh, it's nothing special. It's actually very very crude. Um, there's a lot bunch of stuff that could be done better, but we don't we didn't need. Uh, uh, like a timeless tool, we need a tool to, to do the job right now. Um, and yeah, the other problem was, was like uh, seamless login from previous system. So we also needed to, for people to, to actually, they were using this kind of very system where they would, they would put their ID number and then uh, um, they were put in uh, the their password. We didn't know their passwords, we only had hashes. We didn't want to use uh, their IDs, we wanted to use their emails, so we had to make that kind of transition. But on their first login, they would have to go from one to the other. Uh, and uh, that's, so we had this kind of legacy, and then a legacy account controller, which would hook up, intercept, 
uh, do some stuff and you know get them rolling. Uh, and yeah, this was <coughs> when it comes to uh, uh, in dev issues. One of the biggest ones was actually updating indices after entity modifications. So you say we add a field to our database, a new field, and we want those that to be reflected on the indices in uh, uh, in the database. Uh, that will not be done for all the previous entries uh, unless you would delete something. I can't remember what it was, but for it, but uh, for so many for so many entities. It would just take too long. We just needed to do something, and we knew what we wanted to update. So we we're like, yeah, let's just make like some kind of a, you know, let's like just plug in and do some kind of hack to actually get that part that we needed updated, updated as fast as possible. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry, my counter is uh, stopped. Uh, uh, how much time do I have? So maybe we have like seven minutes. Okay, cool. Question if it's all right. With the questions. Okay. Ten minutes with the questions. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, cool. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty close to being done. So some of the helpers and utils we we uh, we made in the meanwhile. So we have made this kind of content service, which would tie up drivers and handlers in together because we wanted to validation to be defined at one point for these entities. Uh, it's not really something smart. I think it's just like convenience. Uh, yeah, I've already mentioned yes, yes, we utils be actually hooked up to some kind of private method. We wanted to get it out so we can actually update indexes on our own the way we wanted to. So that those updates were faster and you know and uh, and uh, grainier. Uh, content extensions, so uh, as when you come from entity framework and stuff, you're trying to reduce, and, you re and you're used to that way of doing stuff, you're trying to reduce that kind of boilerplate where you're actually, you know, doing that kind of content, then load, and attach, then uh, blah, blah, and all that stuff, so we then did some kind of extensions just to get that kind of type, type of thing rolling faster. Uh, taxonomy extensions, yeah, uh, fetching taxonomy is also kind of like a uh, get term, uh, add term, and all that stuff. So we also try to get uh, that a bit more easier for us for our use case. And also a uh, bunch of different overheads for display drivers and helpers to get some stuff out. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, but that's also not really. Uh, I think it's everyone has to do that, so it's a f not, nothing of uh, particular uh, notice. So it, the whole thing went well. So we managed to wrap up uh, three different systems into one: WordPress, One Day, and Portal into Orchard. Uh, as uh, as I said, uh, great thing about Orchard is out of the box administration UI. You know, you get users, you get admin, admin interface, you get uh, permissions. Draft published version facility is very useful and something you would have to uh, always develop and take notice of if you're doing it uh, manually. Um, easy to extend existing types. Awesome, although not very u not, not not much used from from our users. We mostly it's from our developers we use it. Um, it's a contagious model because once you get used to the whole thing, you know you add a content type and then you get all the admin UI. It's it's awesome, you know, and then you just do that all the time. <laughs> and uh, and uh, all the concise, concise definitions of entity types and their UI presentations. So you have a migration. You have like okay, this is my company. Uh, and company has these fields and uh, has these kind of validations and has this kind of representation, great stuff. Uh, and uh, I love the model where you can actually just download the thing, uh, type .net run and it runs locally without any kind of in installation, that's awesome, that's beautiful, it's, it's such a refreshment when in this day and age when everyone wants to, to install uh, the whole, I don't know, uh, Kerberos, well, no, not Kerberos, Kubernetes, <laughs> uh, just to get some utility going. Um, and on the other hand, uh, steep learning curve uh, on how to handle development properly. There's a, you know different ways you have to actually do some stuff, and then you have to decide on what's your 
preferred way of doing it. Um, document data model has its own inherent issues, which we all know. It's application first, and then it's like, what you're going to do with it? You know, what, what happens if you change the model? How are you going to handle it? And so on. Nothing, nothing new, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, database agnostic, but has its bugs. I actually had a bug where I would do something SQLite, then I push production, and production would just die. Uh, uh, I, uh, uh, because there was some kind of different data type thing, I can't remember what, which it was, but uh, you have to be aware of that, that you, you can't really expect, escape implementation differences between different uh, between SQLite and SQL Server and Postgres or whatever. Um, it, anti model is powerful, but noodly. Noodly means like, yeah, it's somewhere there. Yeah, if you want to find out what's going on with your database via SQL, good luck. So, and your data, and how you're going to handle it. Of course, there's indexes, but it's not perfect. Uh, you have to think about upfront about indexes, and then you have to update them, and then and so on. And uh, yeah, you do need to store knowledge of Orchard internals. Uh, so uh, I always, always hold Orchard open next to uh, my uh, own stuff. And that's about, uh, oh yeah, this is, uh, you know, when you have these files, you have to update here, blah, blah, blah. And then sometimes something doesn't show. And if you're not uh, experienced, oh yeah, I forgot the placement. And then you go to the placement and then you put there and then and everything magically works. So, uh, so yeah, this is something like we were thinking. Uh, this is what we actually now do. We take Orchard as a boilerplate, something that we start with, and then we do some kind of regular anti uh, framework development or SP development, doesn't matter. Uh, we, are, we are actually doing some kind of blazer development with it. Uh, I'm not sure where we are. That's my colleague doing more with that, but we are mingling those two, but I'm not sure. Naming, naming, naming cleaning, cleanup, uh, I actually mentioned that, I don't know some, uh, who I was talking about that. Everything is a content. There's too much work content in Georgia. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking maybe like, you know, if we are, what we are talking about uh, zoning, maybe main instead of content would be better but, uh, as a start. Uh, and title um, integration to SQL, um, Maybe that's that's a whole topic, uh, but yeah. Anyway, I'll stop here. Uh, and yeah, dynamic parts are awesome, and the models for the win. Uh, thank you. And questions. <laughs> thank you very much. You said you had some uh, concerns with document data model. Can you elaborate on what you meant there? So, uh, document data models in, in general are uh, uh, application driven. So when you, so that, that's that's a, it's it's just that you know where you you think about uh, how you will uh, build your application and then you design your model with uh, relational document uh, relational database models. You think about your data and then you think about the application. Those are two different approaches to how things are done, uh, and uh, they have they 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 have their own uh, advantages and disadvantages. However, in .NET, people are used to entity framework; they were used to uh, databases, and going to this uh, gets people confused and riled up sometimes. You know, like oh, how do I now get something out which I wanted to do it at first? And it's not it's not uh, it's not the same. So yeah, I, that that's what I thought about it. You know, it's not it's really not about uh, Orchard. It's just about how it's uh, how it's done generally. Uh, if I understood correctly, you had some specific problems with your WordPress and Monday about not set up that you saw the Orchard core. Mm -hmm. uh, can you put some numbers on that? Like previously, it was that much, now it was this much, or we spent that many hours maintaining it, and now it's different. So something for us to grasp on. Uh -huh, okay, uh, so I think Monday costs around uh, $20, $30 per user, or something like that, uh, for user management per month. So uh, if you 
if you if you have like five administrators on that, uh, that's like hundred dollars a month just for uh, administration of that of some databases or some tables, you know. And uh, and then uh, they was then telling me, oh yeah, but I can't add a field. Yeah, you can add a field in Orchard. So they so they can add their own fields in Orchard. We can add uh, very fast, and that's already and this is zero dollars. Actually, we pay. Their hosting is like five dollars for just the, the basic SQL database, and that's about it. Um, as Azure, uh, their web services on our plan, which holds a bunch of websites, so I'm not going to count that. It will be there anyway. So uh, that's one day. WordPress, yeah, hosting for WordPress uh, maintenance. I don't know. I mean, it can be whatever. You know, maybe nothing. Maybe, but it's never. It's never nothing. It's just uh, so. Uh, but uh, you can say that they save thousand dollars at least <laughs> just on website uh, management uh, uh, a year. Uh, that's not much money, but uh, when it comes to uh, these kind of organizations, they're always like mindful about that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.